Hi, this is Brian Forrester, and today we're exploring two places right next to the Nile in the area of more or less of Luxor and Thebes. And these two sites you may have never heard of because they're not popular like places such as, of course, the Giza Plateau. But here we are in the small town of Esna, and we're going to be looking at a Greco Roman temple that. Um, was made during the Greco-Roman period after the New Kingdom. So here you can see it's made out of largely out of sandstone, which is from the area in general. So it's not as though exotic materials had to have been brought in from great distances in order to construct it. And that's what we tend to find when we look at dynastic structures anyway is we find that most of them are made of limestone, which is relatively soft, and the sandstone of the area is not particularly hard either. It's when we get into the pre-dynastic works that we get into a lot of construction um, out of granite and cyanite and diorite and basalt, the very, very hard stones that you would need rather high-tech equipment to utilize. Now, if you look at the screen on the upper right, you can see a, what looks like a floating figure, but I don't know how to read hieroglyphics, so I don't know what the symbol actually is, though some people think that it's some kind of astronaut. And as we walk around inside, as far as I remember, there are 25 giant columns, and they're made of multiple pieces of stone, one stacked on top of another. So that, again, is typical of dynastic construction technique, whereas when we get into the pre-dynastic, that's where columns have a tendency of being made of one single piece of stone, <clears throat> or in the case of the obelisk as well, that would be one piece of stone. Now the ceilings are all, or were originally all painted, and the columns are covered in hieroglyphs, so they're gradually starting to do some restoration work inside this temple. And hats off to the Egyptian government, because again, this, this temple is relatively obscure. It's not on the main tour route, but since we do a four-day cruise on the Nile, it was natural for us to stop here and have a look at it. And this shows you layer upon layer upon layer of at least 2,000 years of construction in this little town. Now we're getting off our cruise ship and we're at Komombo, which again, of course, is right on the Nile. And Komombo as well is a Greco-Roman construction in general. A few little features there that appear to be pre-dynastic, but in general, it's Greco-Roman in construction, once again, made largely out of sandstone. So you can see there's been a lot of damage to the structure over the course of time, built somewhere in the region of 2,000 years ago. Lots of hieroglyphics. And then the areas that you see, or which you're going to see, that do not contain hieroglyphics, those such as on the right-hand side, that's modern-day repair work. So again, it's not one of the most profound sites, not a site where we see lots of um, evidence of lost ancient high technology, pre-dynastic construction, but still, if you're in the area, it's well worth visiting. Now this stone is interesting. It's likely either black granite or possibly all, could be diorite. And you can see it's generally flat surfaces with that bull nose curve, so no hieroglyphics of any way, shape, or form, except on the back side, you see a double-headed cobra. So that was probably added during dynastic times. The original stone piece is likely pre-dynastic because, again, it's of a very hard stone that the dynastic people could not have efficiently worked, as I've said many, many times in different videos. So there again, you can see the areas that don't have the hieroglyphs, and obviously that is modern, or relatively modern, restoration. 
But what's interesting uh, is the threshold I'm about to walk across it looks like a giant slab of granite, and the entire floor, as far as I remember, is made of basalt. So the floor and the thresholds could be pre-dynastic megalithic, and then the dynastic Egyptians chose to build uh, this site during the Greco-Roman period on top of a megalithic site, which is quite typical of what we find in Egypt, especially in northern Egypt, and also in Peru and Bolivia. Now here is a well that goes down a very great depth, most likely from the, again, from the Greco-Roman period. And then here we have another well. This one has a much more interesting story. You can see that there's a spiral staircase that goes all the way down to the bottom. And this was a place of initiation, we were told. This is where people were taught, the initiates were taught to overcome their fears. That's the entrance to a staircase that actually goes all the way down to the bottom of the well, which would have been filled with water, and crocodiles. And so the initiate's job was to go down to the very bottom, go in, up through where the water layer was, and then climb the spiral staircase before the crocodiles got, uh, got them. <clears throat> but what the initiates didn't know is that the priests fed the crocodiles with a lot of food, so the likelihood of being caught by them was very, very small. But it's a very, very interesting structure located at Komombo by the Nile. So here we have some upcoming events if you'd like to join us. In June, our annual Inti Raimi Inca Celebration of the Sun Tour. In August, Megalis and Ancient Spirituality of Peru and Bolivia. In September, my first trip to Malta to explore ancient megalithic and other sites, including the Hypogeum. In October, Megalithic and the Metaphysical Mysteries of Egypt tour with Jimmy from Bright Insight YouTube channel. In November, our annual Explore the Mysteries of Peru and Bolivia tour. And in February of 2022, Mexico, Ancient Technology Tour.